Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Aptitude Club. A very good morning to all of you and hope all of you are doing well. So I welcome you uh, to this video on QA Booster series. I have already done 20 uh, videos on this booster series. I'll keep doing more. Uh, the purpose of QA Booster is to solve good quality questions to help you understand and enhance your thinking process when you see a new question. So in this uh, session we are going to take up this beautiful question on binomial expansion. And as you can see, uh, the question asks for how many terms in this particular expansion uh, are integers. So now to solve this, we need to understand what binomial expansion is and then try and think in what way it can be applied to solve this question. As usual, I'll ask all of you watching the video to pause at this moment. If you already know what binomial expansion is, maybe try it yourself first and then look at the explanation. I'll try and explain it in two different ways. One will be a normal, normal process and then I'll explain a shortcut how to answer this in less than five seconds. So stay tuned uh, for both the methods and you'll definitely find it useful. So let us begin. The so first thing uh, that we definitely need to know is binomial expansion. Before getting into the solution, let's try and briefly discuss what binomial expansion is. So when I'm writing a plus b whole to the power n, this is expanded as n c 0, a to the power n b to the power 0 plus n c 1, a to the power n minus 1 b to the power 1, n c 2, a to the power n minus 2 b to the power 2 and this goes on like this till n c n a to the power 0 b to the power n. This is the expansion. Now try and understand that you don't have to remember this expansion. Okay, there are just a few things you need to understand. Now the first thing is here NCR can be expanded as N factorial by R factorial into N minus R factorial. Binomial coefficients, these are called as okay, binomial coefficients NCR and NCR, no matter what the value is, is always an integer. So you don't have to worry about this. NCR will always be an integer irrespective of the value of n and r, always an integer. Okay. And if you see the expansion total, you have n plus 1 terms. There are in total n plus 1 terms, that is, you start with the lowest power of b and end with the highest power of b from 0 till n, or from nc0 till ncn, or from a to the power n till a to the power 0. Anyways, there is total n plus 1 terms. So you write the coefficients in a systematic manner sequentially nc0, nc1, nc2, nc3 till ncn. You start with the highest power of a and lowest power of b. Gradually with every term the power of a keeps reducing by 1 and power of b keeps increasing by 1. As a result when you reach the last term power of a is the least that is 0 and everything goes to b. So we just need to understand the expansion. No need to remember or mug up a lot of uh, people get intimidated the uh, moment they see the expansion. But it's all about understanding it, not to memorize it. If you understand, there's nothing to memorize here. Now, to uh, like explain it a bit further, let me write a few values. Suppose a plus b whole square, I can actually write it in this way, 2c0, a to the power 2, b to the power 0, plus 2c1, a to the power 1, b to the power 1, plus 2c2, a to the power 0, b to the power 2. Using a similar logic, I can write this a plus b whole cube, it is 3c0 a to the power 3 b to the power 0 plus 3c1 a square b to the power 1 plus 3c2 a to the power 3 b to the power 2 plus 3c3 sorry this is a to the power 1 b to the power 2 plus 3c3 a to the power 0 b to the power 3 and so on we can continue in this manner. So if I have to define the general term, like any term in the binomial expansion, what will be the general term? You see that if I am taking this, this is my first term whose coefficient is nc0. This is my second term whose coefficient is nc1. This is my third term whose coefficient is nc2. So if I am taking the tr plus 1th term, then the coefficient is ncr. And whatever is the subscript of the coefficient, that is the power of b, nc2 b to the power 2, nc1 b to the power 1, 
n c n b to the power n so n c r b to the power r and the rest remaining power goes to a so it is a to the power n minus r this is my general term because sum of powers of a and b in each of the terms is either ways n you take any term the sum of power of a and b is always n so this is what briefly the expansion is uh, we'll discuss binomial theorem uh, in detail in some other video but this video is not about a binomial expansion just to understand the expansion and apply it in this particular case. so let's go back to the question 5 to the power 1 by 5 and 8 to the power 1 by 8 whole to the power 100 so when i'm writing this expansion 5 to the power 1 by 5 plus 8 to the power 1 by 8 whole to the power 100 if you look at its general term, it is 100 CR 5 to the power 1 by 5 to the power 100 minus R and 8 to the power 1 by 8 whole to the power R. Just using this thing, last thing that we discussed. Whatever is the subscript, 8 will take that power, the rest power will come to uh, 5 to the power 1 by 5. So here 5 to the power 1 by 5 is A and 8 to the power 1 by 8 is B. Now question is saying that uh, if this general term or how many of the terms in this expansion are integers. So if this term has to be an integer, 100 CR is always an integer. I explained that binomial coefficients are always integers. Now if these two terms have to be integers under what condition will they be integers 5 to the power 1 by 5 is not an integer it's an irrational number 8 to the power 1 by 8 is also an irrational number so they will be integers when 100 minus r is a multiple of 5 and r is a multiple of 8 because when you look at this, this thing can be rewritten in this way that this is 100 C R 5 to the power 100 minus R divided by 5 into 8 to the power R divided by 8. So 5 and 8 are already integers. So their powers should also be integers. Only then overall term will be an integer. So 100 minus R should be divisible by 5 and R should be divisible by 8. So what all cases are possible that is what you have to figure out I am explaining the long process then I will also explain your method where you can answer it in just 5 seconds but to understand the shortcut you also need to know the proper method then subsequent questions you can use the shortcut. Now what can be the value of 100 minus R and R the sum is 100. And R should be a multiple of 8, 100 minus R should be a multiple of 5. That means I will only take even multiples of 5. I will not be taking odd multiples. Why? Because sum of two numbers is even. Multiple of 8 is always even. So by default, multiples of 5 should also be even. So I will start like this 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100. Maximum possibility is 100. When 100 minus R is 0, R is 100. When this is 10, this is 90, 80. Sum should be 100. So 0 plus 100, 10 plus 90, 20 plus 80, 30 plus 70, 40 plus 60, 50 plus 50, 60 plus 40, 70 plus 30. 80 plus 20, 90 plus 10, and 100 plus 0. So these are my possibilities. Now think about this. I will have to pick up the cases where it is a multiple of 5 and multiple of 8 simultaneously. Now is 0 divisible by 5? Yes. Is 100 divisible by 8? No. 10 divisible by 5 but 90 is not divisible by 8. 20 is divisible by 5 and 80 is divisible by 8. So this gives me my first term. 
okay so the first term is 100 c 80 5 to the power 1 by 5 to the power 20 8 to the power 1 by 8 to the power 80 so this is my first term which is an integer then 70 is not divisible by 8 60 is not divisible by 8 50 is not divisible by 8 this is divisible by 8 so this gives me a six, uh, second term 100 c 40 5 to the power 1 by 5 to the power 60 8 to the power 1 by 8 to the power 40 this will be an integer then 30 not divisible by 8 20 not divisible by 8 then finally i will get this term so this is like 100 c 0 5 to the power 1 by 5 whole to the power 100 8 to the power 1 by 8 plus 0. So these are the three terms which are integers. And only three terms are integers. Where you get the power of 5 to the power 1 by 5 is a multiple of 5 and power of 8 to the power 1 by 8 is a multiple of 8. So that will only happen in three instances, thus three terms are integers. But this is quite a long process. Okay, we'll have to write so much and you, you might already been thinking why solve this question it looks uh, like too lengthy but to like uh, uh, summarize it in one line because the overall power was 100 which is a multiple of 5 this is a multiple of 5 so this should be a multiple of 5 as well as 8 why think of it in this way for this to be an integer 8 to the power 1 by 8 ka jo power aega, that should be a multiple of 8 this we have concluded now if 100 minus r is a multiple of 5 r is also a multiple of 5 isn't it because the sum is a multiple of 5 this part if it is a multiple of 5 so this power also has to be a multiple of 5 so I must take powers which are multiples of 5 and 8 together for 8 to the power 1 by 8. That means here directly I can write my answer the number of terms is basically the number of multiples of 40 that are less than equal to 100. Now where come this 40 is coming from? This 40 is basically the LCM of 5 and 8. Because you want to give such a power to this term which should be a multiple of 8 as well as multiple of 5. Because when I give multiple of 5 to the first part A, so B should also have multiple of 5 because overall sum is a multiple of 5. But again because it is 8 to the power 1 by 8, it should be a multiple of 8 as well. So how many powers are possible which are multiples of 5 as well as 8 that means multiple of 40 so how many multiples of 40 are less than equal to 100 so i'll have 0 40 and 80 and it's only three terms i don't need to write the expansion and totally solve it i can just summarize it in this way only three terms hope this makes sense uh, to all of you So these are the two methods to solve this and I hope all of you understood both because the shortcut comes from the understanding of this process. Alright. So that is it uh, from my end for this video. Hope all of you liked the explanation. If you have watched it this far, do subscribe to my Aptitude Club channel and explore the previous videos that I have done on Quants and LRDI both. You will definitely find it useful on your CAD preparation journey. We will meet again very soon on yet another video. Till then keep solving, keep studying and thanks for watching the video. Bye-bye.